Hello, hello, hello. I would like to welcome everyone to the 63rd episode of Money Trees. We're here on a Friday, and I appreciate our guest for being accommodating. This was my first reschedule ever, and so got to show love there. Anyway, hard work and talent will inevitably lead to success. So it is no surprise that today's guest is being recognized for both in the world of music and music NFTs. He is finding ways to push NFTs forward while mesmerizing and floating across instrumentals. They also head up Pelaman Jr., a sound design, music production, and scoring house. Special guest on a special episode, it is my honor to have the gold-fanged and inevitable Pat Jr. here with us. Yo, Pat, how are you feeling today? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, today is starting well. I actually went and got my uh, my haircut uh, earlier today. So, you know, um, I, I feel like the, uh, the haircut, you know what I'm saying, for a black man at least, is, is like the sense of being, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so Absolutely. I feel... I feel refreshed, man, and you know what I'm saying. I'm 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 ready to 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 get it today. You know what I mean? Yo, man. Okay, so I I, I we're definitely gonna talk about you, but I want to stick with something you just said. It's crazy thinking about for people that don't know, like the haircut. That's the best analogy I've probably ever heard for it. It is truly <laughs> like your sensu bean. So shout out to that. But just random question: When is the last time you had to change barbers? Uh, that was years ago. So you've been able to have um, the same barber for years now? Yeah, man. I mean, I I started, I, I moved down to North Carolina some years back Um, when I was in grade school. Um, and I've had the same barber uh, since I was in grade school. And then I had, when I, I moved to Raleigh, when I got, you know, married in 2010 and I ended up going to another barber cause you know, I had moved to Raleigh and it was kind of like far away. Um, but yeah, like, <laughs> uh, that barber didn't work out. I ended up getting a ringworm from him. <laughs> and so, Hey, yo, uh, yeah, yeah I had to, <laughs> I had to, you know what I'm saying? Um, I had to bounce, you know? So, and then I went back to him. I had called my, you know, my my old barber, you know what I'm saying, and longtime friend. He's like, a, I call him my uncle because he definitely, he's seen me grow up. And he was just like, yeah, man, just just come on, come back home, man. That's all. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, man. I love that. Yo, I'm, I'm living vicariously through you because I haven't had to go to the barber probably in three years. Man's living the clean, shaven life. So I give myself, I, I forgot. I kind of forgot to heard you say that, but it's like when your hairline start you looking a little scraggly, you hit the barbershop, come out, you're ready to take on the world. Um, yo, I'm glad that your day you were able to start off with that cut because literally an hour ago, you put out an NFT is already making waves in the space, few editions sold. Before we jump into that, you did, and I don't know if it was the first one or if you had inspiration from somewhere else in the space, but I'll say for me, it was the first time I've ever seen this. You had, you know, I'll say the balls to burn your Genesis NFT and then throw a party for it. And I think that it was a genius fucking idea. Like that visual promo that you cut for it was insane. Because I'm watching this like, oh, okay, listening to the voiceover. And then it's always dope. You know, I'm, I'll say I have a little bit of a different perspective as I've heard you talk in spaces. But I love hearing rappers go from the cadence and the flow that they have on record to voiceovers especially one like yours where it lends itself so well to that voiceover format colors were ill angles were ill and i'm looking at this uh vi visual that you cut for it and i'm like what the hell is he talking about a burn party like what is the the point of this and then i thought about it as you know as the video progressed and i was like nah this is this is fucking genius so <laughs> Where did that idea come from? Oh man, um, so essentially, like, and I, I've told this story before. I don't mind telling it again. Like, I'll, I and I'll tell the shortened version of it. I come from, 
a family of community. Um, my mom is currently the oldest of five. You know, I've, I've had a grandfather uh, and um, grandmother, well, excuse me, uh, uncle, uh, aunt and uncle. My grandparents have passed away, but my aunt, I have, I had an aunt and an uncle pass away a few years ago. Uh, you know, but she, so she was the oldest of seven, but now the oldest of five. But back then, um, like I have a lot of cousins, man. And when we were younger, we would go to my grandparents' house in Laurel, Maryland. I used to live there for a short time as well. Um, my mom works for IBM, still works for IBM. Um, we, um, lived in New York for a short time then moved to Maryland and then, you know, now North Carolina. But I remember just going back and forth to Maryland when my, you know, my grandparents lived there. And every summer, uh, after, you know, I'm saying school was out in the summer, all of my cousins would come down from New York. And we would all stay at my grandparents' house. They had this big ass house, like in in Laurel, Maryland, and we would stay there over the summers. And so, you know, those summers came with great times, bike rides outside, uh, video games, sharing chores, you know, family prayer time, um, getting in arguments with one another, <laughs> settling disputes, and all that. And so. Like, that's why, I, like, I learned about community. And I mean, it's even a reflection of my life right now. And so I've, I've heard, you know, a good amount of people throw that word around in the space. Um, and it's just like, man, I actually, you know, some people actually know what it is. Some people know a little about what community is, but I actually live it, you know. And so, so yeah, man, I, I actually, like, want to and you can hear it in my music um i still live it like that way like i live out community that way in my life now you know i'm the guy i'm the strong friend of my circle um and for other people i check in on my people i hang out with my people i just like community man you know and so um i wanted to actually allow that to be shown not just in the value that i bring to web3 but in how I release, you know what I'm saying, my additions. Now I do, or my my uh, my NFTs, I do, I still will, and I do still believe in um, one of ones. Like I still, you know, I, I definitely still will release one of ones and I believe in one of ones, but I also want to make, you know what I'm saying, my stuff available for the community in Web3 so I can bring people along with this experience that I'm trying to build. And so I minted my Genesis NFT the weekend, the day before my birthday in February earlier this year. I set the reserve for one ETH um, and I made I kind of vetted that process too. you know, like I'm like, man, that's a that's a bold like first, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Like reserve for somebody that hasn't been in Web3 for that long, but I vetted it with like some people that I know, Web3, some developers, they heard the quality of the music. You know, also I have like some really talent, like really talented people that helped me out, that put it together, like my homie Sianka, um, my my good friends, JP um, and Brian, you know, who mix and master the record. And my little sister, she's an incredible illustrator and she did the cover art for it, the initial cover art for it. And so I just wanted to be able to like put money in their pockets, bring them in, you know, to Web3 as well. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah, like after kind of going through that thought process with my, you know, with my folks and everything, they were like, nah, one E sounds great. Like that's solid. It's worth that. It's a very great song. Like, and just what you're trying to do. So I made the, you know, I made that the reserve. I wasn't discouraged. Like I said, in the, in the, in the promo video, like I, I've heard plenty of stories where it's taken weeks and, or sometimes months for someone's um, Genesis to sell. Fortunately, I sold a record on catalog, but it wasn't my Genesis, you know, but I still got one off, which was crazy dope, you know, and so, yeah, man, um, 
I just decided like it had been on my mind for a little bit. Um, shout out to Jamie Cornelia. Um, they encouraged the idea when I spoke with them in a the space about it. Um, and they were telling me because Jamie comes from Tezos and Jamie was telling me that they actually had burn parties like burn parties are popular in the Tezos community. And Jamie was like, yo, this would be like super different, you know, for the the ETH blockchain. Like you, you've you got the nerve to actually burn, you know, uh, NFT a one of one on the ETH blockchain. And they were like, that's great. You know, I think that's a great idea and make it available for the community. So, yeah, I, after that conversation, I went through with it and. I mean, here we are. You know, I, I did it late last night. I've already got um, six sold, so I'm 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 feeling pretty good right now, <laughs> as you should be. Let me thank you for retelling the story here on Money Trees. You did tell the story last night at the burn party, but you burned the record of the burn party. So I needed to have this be available somewhere for people that missed it to understand the kind of thought process and just the, you said it like, that's a, it costs bread to put something up on ETH. Like it's not a easy process. Cause it's like, yo, you gotta be willing to one, spend that gas, you know, Tezos, the burn party. That's yo, my, my, my brain just kind of spinning. Cause I'm thinking like, damn, burn parties make a lot of sense on Tezos. And the fact that people don't do it on ETH, I'm looking at all the reasons why you wouldn't. And so when I saw you do this on top of like the financial cost, there's like that ego risk. Right. And I think that ego for artists can get in, not even artists, ego for anyone can get in the way a lot of the time. And when you can kind of put that aside and see a bigger picture, with your art, with what you're doing, and not let that ego take over, you can unlock a completely different, you know, piece of your brain where you were, if you were just stuck with the, no, one ETH is the only way it can go, this community that you've already started building wouldn't necessarily exist right now. And again, you're seeing it in the first hour, people are already jumping on board because they see the value in it. On top of the art being incredible, you are adding utility in with this and inducting people into the gold fang society. Now, I don't believe that shilling is a negative thing, but I don't think this is a shill. I think when you talk about fucking great ideas and things that you love, that ain't that ain't a shill. So anyway, I would love for you to just put in your own words why you added utility to this particular uh, community piece and why the utility is important to the Pat Jr. world. Well, yeah, man, so... Uh, I definitely like, I appreciate you, you allowing me space to talk about it a little bit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so as far as like the utility goes, um, I, I wanted to, for every, for every drop for right now, for right now, for every drop that I do, all of my collectors will be inducted into the Gold Fang Society. Um, and essentially like, you know, the Goldfang Society is that community that I, you know, that I'm talking about, right? Like I wanted to create some kind of like, you know, um, it is a collective, you know, which is my team, but I also wanted to create like a community of people that are, you know, fans of what I do, fans of who I am, um, even outside of the music. And I think I, I do a great job in like showing that, you know what I'm saying? Um, just on social media, like I'm very vulnerable in my music and I'm also transparent in just life in general. Um, and you know, I, I talked about like, uh, Oh no, we had our first reschedule and now Twitter has rugged. Oh, Pat is back. Here we go. Don't worry about it. We'll edit that in the final. Oh, man, I got rug. Okay, okay. <laughs> nah, it's all good. It's all good, G. Pick back up. Pick back up. Oh, man, yeah. My, I, I'm, I'm on my Wi-Fi now. My signal got got dropped. But anyway, all right, we back. We back. Um, But, yeah, I was telling Sassy um, about, like, a little bit about, like, what the Gold Fang Society represents. And that's – I'll try to give the abridged <laughs> version of that at some point. But um, as far as, like, 
you know, the the collective or the community and what it stands for. Um, it's protect your people, serve your people, and shine together. And that's like my life story. Um, I, I'm, I'm a protector, you know what I'm saying? Very much so. That's just my character. Like, I protect people. Like, if I see somebody being done wrong, um, like, I'm kind of the one that, you know, that, that sometimes when it's necessary, I step in to say, hey, this is not cool. Um, um, as far as like people who I may not know, uh, like in my own life, in my personal life, just, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, I'm very much so a protector of like my friends. It's kind of that situation where it's like, man, if I, I get to know you as a, as an individual, we get cool. Like, now nah, you can't talk shit about this person. Like, <laughs> like this is the homie, like, you know what I'm saying? Very much so a protector of people um, and my people. Um, and I'm also very much so like a servant, man, you know, um, like I I'm very much so like a person that loves to give and do for others and be there for others. Like not just serve with, you know, my money, but also with my time, you know, also emotionally, like when it comes to my music, I believe my music, the purpose for my music and my art is to serve for the well-being of other people. And so, um, yeah, like that's that's how I, you know, serve and in and, and, and other ways, of course, too, but and then shine together. And so it's it's kind of like that whole it is it comes full circle because it's like, you know, for me, you know, I was talking about community. I'm all about building with people, I'm all about um, like building relationships, building friendships. And I'm also about like putting other people on, like, you know, I was talking about earlier, how about like, I want to use web three as like a place where I can onboard my friends, you know, and teach them about it and bring them in so that they can get, you know, whatever they're trying to get out of web three, whether it be, you know, connections or, you know, inspiration, ETH, you know, like I just believe in putting people on and seeing people win. Um, and I think that should be just the, the, the thought life for, for artists or just people in general, man, protect your people, serve your people and shine together, win together. Um, it's, I, I do think there's such thing as healthy competition, but like, you know, when it comes to like, uh, sports you know what i'm saying and, and stuff of that nature that's cool you know you playing games or whatever i think there's a little bit of healthy competition in hip-hop as well um but like just in the the everyday life like just i i think that should be a mantra that we all like live by you know um especially shining together and and so yeah man like um as far as someone who was following me as a, a, you know, a fan and supporting like my art in web three, those people will get, um, to be announced perks, you know what I'm saying? And privilege privileges that, you know, other people, you know, aren't able to get into, um, further, you know, down the line, exclusive content and stuff. But then also I'm planning something really special in 2023 um, for some music that I'm working on and I will be selecting a random person in this first like regenesis NFT, if you will, uh, one of the owners of the NFT will have, uh, will get a pay, like I'll pay for their flight to come out to this event. One random person. I wish I could, br I could bring all of them, <laughs> but, um, again, I just, like Kevin Hart says, the way the bank account is set up, you know, we to, we'll, we'll work your way up to that for the gold fag. No, I see it. I see right. It. But I mean, yo, for real, like, honestly, um, I'm going to, with a few of the drops that I do, I'm going to be, um, like, doing this where I I let people know ahead of time, like, okay, this, this is one of the drops where one random, you know, person will be selected out of the 24 or however many additions to come, you know what I'm saying, to this event that I'm planning. Because, again, I like I like giving experiences, you know what I'm saying? I, I love giving people experiences along with the music. 
and I'm planning something big for for next year. So yeah, man, I love it. You touched on so many gems in there. Um, speaking on competition, I'll start there. I like to say that I can only ever compete against myself. I think when you have too much of a outward focus on like external competition, especially in something as subjective as art, your your motivations start getting really convoluted and your art will then suffer from that as well. And you should not use people as like these bars you have to like reach per se because you don't know what their experience or life was like that got them to that point. So you can only ever, you know, compete from your own perspective, your own point of view. You also talked about just community, right? And I think that your family experience has clearly laid the foundation for your approach to community. The fact that, you know, this conversation behind utility and the need for utility in art is one that has not yet been solved. I don't even know if it ever will be solved. And there's going to be people who draw crazy lines in the sand and there's lines that they won't cross but i think it's a spectrum i think there's times when you can release music with no utility and there's times where you can with or where, where you can release it with where when it hears what well, excuse me when i hear what it is you're trying to build it makes sense for you to have utility not only do you get to own a piece of the art but you get to become a part of this movement this movement that has plans and needs funds for the plans to be actualized I think that's another piece of it's kind of the Web3 NFT uh, conversation that's missing is like the lack of liquidity that really talented creators have access to. And it becomes a thing of like the the music, yes, it is the utility, but at the same time, how many collectors out there are really going to buy it? You know, the the general public is not used to paying for music like this so until there's a larger pool of people willing to spend the money you have to find out whatever works for you and your audience so i love the utility that you're adding i love how it mixes irl with online support and it provides kind of different entry points for people that would be interested in your nft speaking of putting people on gotta shout you out because your sound design company pelaman jr has sold over 5,000 sample packs on your own website. And to me, like (laughs) when you think about what goes into a record, there's probably songs that would have not been made or would have not graced someone's ears if it wasn't for your company. And that alone deserves love and recognition. When I I appreciate that, man, for real. Oh, for sure, G, for sure. When or not, not even when, because I don't, not only the time, not that it doesn't matter, but why did you decide to start Pelaman Jr.? Um, really, it was just you know what I'm saying, um, like a, a thing that we wanted to try out. <laughs> Me and my homie, um, Jay Pelham, um, who was a longtime friend, uh, like we just were talking one day, and it was honestly, it was a way for us to fund like you know take care of bills and stuff because i i went full-time music in 2016 and um it was a lot of shooting in the dark like in the beginning um and, and just figuring stuff out no, that, that was the wrong emoji <laughs> oh, no 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 no, going, no, no absolutely <laughs> not like no nah, i i laugh about it now and i think about it because i was just i was really just trying to figure stuff out man you know um and so, like, I, I I, was doing, like, I was producing for people. I was making beats for people. At the time, I was shooting, vi- you know, music videos, you know, for people and, and doing some, like, startup business stuff, like, with videography. Um, And it, you know, it, and it was cool up until a point where I figured out, like, you know, um, especially dealing with the type of customer that wants to get, you know, the, the, the discount, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Like, um, so yeah, like that, that, that can be discouraging, you know? Uh, but yeah, so, so I, you know, I was doing, you know, video, it just got to a point was like, I need to find something else that can like pay the bills, but then also like fund my artist career as well. Cause I think, I think some creatives, 
don't understand, may not understand that you need multiple like sources of income to, you know, to be able to survive, you know, unless you're, you know, Drake or I don't even think it's too many artists in the top tier like bracket that actually can just live off of music alone. Right. You got to like artists have to tour. Um, I, I saw that uh, Chloe Bailey was actually talking in an interview recently and she was saying that like unless you're a certain bracket of artists, which isn't many, you actually end up going in the red when it comes to music. And so you there's brand deals, there's, you know, what I'm saying all types of way to make money as an artist, you know, features and, you know, all of that different stuff. And so um, that was one of the reasons why we started it. Like I knew I had an ear, you know, what I'm saying for uh, production. Um, I think that's one thing. Actually, I'll say this. I'm proud to say this. A black woman who graduated from Berkeley who can play several instruments said, Pat, you are a musician. She's a good friend of mine. She's amazing. Um, and I was like, really? You think so? I was like, why? Like, why do you say that? She was like, because your ear is amazing. And so, yeah, like I, I've always championed my my ear as a creative, as a as an artist, as a music producer. Um, and like my homie JP, like I was like, man, I think we can do this. Like he comes with years of musicianship as well. And we started it in I want to say it's 2018. Um we started Pelman Junior in 2018. And um yeah, man, like no, I was it was, was it late? I think it was Tuesday. Yeah, 2018, early 2018. And um, yeah, like it, it was a th- it sound design just became a thing that I was like, hey man, I think we, we'd be good at doing this. We started under one company at first, you know, uh, and we ended up the company ended up changing their business model, so we branched out on our own in 2018, and we we've been doing really good ever since. Um, you know, of course, like we're on some bigger distributor sites like Splice. And, uh, you know, working with some other companies as well, some bigger names this year to release some stuff with them. Um, But sound design hasn't just been a means for money for me, but it's definitely connected, you know, me with some incredible like people. Like I had the honor and the pleasure of working with Hit Boy in 2019. He's actually used our stuff Um, and some other producers. You know, he's been the only one that we worked with in person. But like we've I've gotten to work with some other producers and get some placements. And so through through Pelman Jr., you know, um, it's connected me with some really dope producers that I've gotten a chance to work with. Um, and yes, yeah, definitely helped me as an artist. It's helped like my ear grow as a as an artist and a producer. So, yeah, man, like Pelman Jr. is definitely um like one of those things that I've created that I've been very proud of. And then like all of the people on the team, like they're just, they're all good friends of mine. And that's all. And we, we're all good friends, but we know how to separate business and friendship, which is very dope, <laughs> which is very dope. So yeah. And and rare. I'll say that. That is a, Facts. that is a skill on the same separation tip. How do you separate kind of the business mind from the artist's creative mind, especially when it comes to controversy? And now I don't want to give light to this person's name, but we can talk about the situation with somebody stealing samples and, you know, using them in malicious ways. How as a business, because you went about it in a very controlled and I would say, you know, quote unquote, appropriate manner to resolve it. And I feel like artist brain is more like, nah, I'm gonna have to turn it to 100 and address this mofo who's out here stealing our shit. Like, how do you separate those two for yourself? Uh, (laughs) It's funny. I don't mind you asking that either. I figured you was gonna, you know, talk about it. Um, I mean, man, honestly, like, I've been blessed to have some really incredible mentors in the music business um, that have guided me. You know, um, I think being able to handle things the way I did 
Cause I thought I was on a hundred and ten, but obviously to some people I didn't even I wasn't on a hundred and ten, which is a good thing. Um, cause I I can definitely that's not my max out, but I <laughs> but I went I definitely you know handled it in a professional way. I believe so, and of course there was some emotion there too, cause it's like hey man, like you're not just stealing from me, you're stealing from my homies who have families and kids, you know. And so that is the thing that gets me upset. Because, again, remember, I'm a protector. So it's one thing to disrespect me. But then when you start disrespecting my people, then that's when I get that really throws me over the top. Um, And so, yeah, man, I think like I know that I've been blessed with some incredible mentors over the year. uh, Some great friends that have like given me great advice about just music. You know what I'm saying? Um, not just music, but the music business and just how to conduct myself and how to move. Like, I think one, one thing that I've heard a lot from people, um, that, that have hit me up for either interviews or like, you know, just, sh- you know, showing love, you know what I'm saying? Give him, you know, compliments or whatever the case is, or like, you know, or that want to work with me. They've always like those those people have always complimented me, complimented me on, man, I love the way you move in it, like in this industry. Like I love the way you're moving, the way you're building, um, the way you roll things out, you know, but like people know me to be like a professional, like stand up person. And I thank God for that integrity that I have. Um, you know, it's just, it's only by his grace. So yeah, man, I like that situation the thing is with with situations like these in general when it comes to the sound design game excuse me it's expected you know this is not the first time well i this is the first time i've seen it blatantly done like this um there are other instances where you know because i'm not gonna sit up here in front man um like two years prior to me starting pelman jr i was the guy in the reddit threads you know what i'm saying hitting up different people and downloading packs and trading (laughs) sample packs and shit. Um, I was the guy like downloading, like from websites that give it out for free, you know? And I, I matured enough and realized like, yo man, this is, this is, this is not cool. This is stealing, (laughs) you know, just because it's not something that's actually tangible and is a digital product. It's still stealing and you taking away like a lot of these companies, sound design, um, VST, virtual instrument companies, plug-in companies. A lot of these companies are not big. Like there are only maybe a very few that are actually like big, you know, like um, Ableton, you know, FL Studio, you know, the DA, you know, the, the dog companies or whatever. But like, and there's a few plug-in companies, but a lot of these companies are not, not big, you know, and they don't make a, like tons of money. And so, yeah, like pirating is a, is, is a, is a thing in, and when it comes to like the music producer world. And so, um, I've seen, you know, our stuff in Reddit threads, I've seen stuff, uh, on certain websites that you can download for free. Um, and I've seen some people resell our stuff, like, like the resale stuff. We can't really zap those links because I guess they're like in another country, but, uh, yeah, I've seen people, um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, resell our stuff for like six, seven (laughs) dollars and it's sad, but this person decided to upload our stuff to YouTube and he had a dedicated YouTube page, our stuff, and a bunch of other people's stuff. Um, and so it's just like, yeah, man, you got to make an example out of some people. And sometimes you, know, you got to do it. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's so, all it comes down to. So um, I, I feel like I, I feel like I handled it, you know, well, <laughs> gracefully, gracefully for sure, Pat. I was gonna say it uh, reminded me when I was listening today. Just thinking back on th- that particular situation, how I was like, man, I guess I guess I have come a little bit further than than old me. Seeing how you did, it. I'm like, I probably would have went about it the same way. Probably wouldn't have spazzed. And it made me think about the Kendrick lyric 
uh, father time. He's like, guess I'm not as not mature as I think. Uh, got some healing. F- I don't want to. I'm, I'm butchering it. Damn it! I'm just listening to the album. Guess I'm not mature as I think. Got some healing to do. Yeah. Anyway, I, I can't. I can't rap. So take <laughs> take my cadence out of it. Uh, I saw you tweet about the Kendrick album. You got the night listening. I woke up early and bumped it. What is your early take? And now I know this is not asked for a review. You cannot digest something you most you can't digest most albums quickly and especially something that's been brewing for five years but just as a fan i saw that you got your wife interested into his music from good kid mad city what is your early impression from this album i'll say two things i'll keep it very short because i don't have much to say because i'm still digesting it um it is a very personal album. It is a very encouraging album. Um, it's 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 definitely like it's immaculate for several reasons that I'm still like thinking about. But one of the main reasons why I'm very excited, and I'll share this here, like, um, is that for the past two years. I have been developing a new sound direction for where I'm going in my music. And this album has shown me that I am not too far left at all. And I'll just say that. Hey, okay, okay. I, I set it up a little bit like that. Because I was like, yo, he's hinting at some shit in these tweets. But I want to see if I could actually figure out what, where, where it was. I'm excited to hear that. Um, I share all of your sentiments with this project. I'm sure I'll have an opinion in a month after I've actually got to let it digest. And this was one of those ones where I couldn't even check social media. I was like, yo, I'm not looking at no tweets. I don't need to hear anyone's take on this. You know, an hour after it dropped, I'm going to listen to it on my own time, in my own space. I haven't even got to listen to it outside yet or in the car. It's like I want to hear this in so many different like formats and mediums. And I know you get it as an artist and as a sound designer where depending on what you're listening on, the music is going to feel different. Where it's like your car speakers hit a, hit a little different than your studio speakers. Your headphones hit a little different than your studio speakers. You know, that uh, when you're walking outside versus when you're in the sun or the rain, it's like all of these elements play into your listening experience. And so to me to really get through an album, I need to hear it across the board in all of those different mediums. Um, not to take it too far off of you, but just the, it was, it was a good Friday, man. Like it was, it was a good Friday to wake up and have an album that everyone has been anticipating that I feel like it'll be hard to, it's hard to live up to expectations a lot at this level in music. And yeah, it's just one that I think everyone can appreciate, but anyway, back to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yo, this has been, this has been dope. I I really want to thank you for coming on and sharing your world, sharing your vision, being personal and, you know, telling that story about your family. Cause I know that that can become a little bit much having to constantly reiterate over and over. So just, yeah, I, I thank you for being open with us here. Put it on is available through your own website. I love that. You know, Web3 is all about provenance and ownership, and that means something different to everyone. But one of the things or ideas that I love is the idea that artists are the platform. And we don't necessarily have to be aggregated and fighting for attention in every single instance. While for sure there's benefits to being on certain sites for discovery, it's still good to be able to capture your audience through your, through your own site. So yes, put it on as available. There are still some additions available. If you want to be a part of the Gold Fang Society, if you want to support amazing art. Yo, Pat, you can rap too, G. D-Nice was in here earlier, and I played some of your music at the start of his episode. And I think I had listened before, just because, you know, music NFT spaces, but I hadn't listened. And I listened for real, for real prior to that. And I was like, oh, okay. I see why people are rocking with him so much. And uh, I'm sure that there'll be more people that have that sentiment. Yo, no, no jokes, man. Like, it's not a, it's not a knock. Nah, I mean, just... There's so much music. <laughs> it's just like, 
I Yo, I it. listened. Yeah, I listened and was like, nah, nah, I get it. And again, sometimes you just got to be in that right that right mind space. You know what I mean? Like you throw music on on a playlist or whatever, or you hear it just not in the right thing. You're like, oh yeah, this, not, this is dope. It's not it's not ass. I'm 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 not never going to listen to this again. But it really really connected with me. Um, so I was I'm glad that you got to come on. Glad you were open to the reschedule. And this has been a great you know midday for my Friday. Before I let everyone get out of here, I ask each guest two questions. The first question is going to be, what is your seed phrase? Now, you know, in crypto, your seed phrase is normally your account recovery key. To me, that term just doesn't scream security. And while we're trying to onboard all these people into our space, we need to change whatever the meaning of seed phrase is in the popular uh, colloquialisms. I hope I'm using that word correctly. I'm glad that there aren't enough people grammar checking my shit yet. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> um, Pat, your seed phrase here on Money Trees is meant to be a saying, a lyric, a slogan, a quote, a motto that you live by that embodies your approach to your career, to your art, to your craft. Pat Jr., what is your seed phrase? Protect your people, serve your people, shine together. Whew. I love it. My second question is, we're going to have the one of one, Pat Jr., Money Trees, number 63 note, go up for sale, and it will be listed on Zora. What would Actually, you know what? Before I ask you this question, I have to also just address the fact that I am editing your note as well. Two days in a row. It's rare of me. I, you know, I, don't, I don't know what's happening. I need an intern. No, I'm, ki- I'm kidding. But... You're lowercase, man. The guests have not called me on any errors. I don't think I've been wrong on anyone prior to it. But yesterday, I missed an exclamation point on Carissa's name. And I was looking today, and I'm like, yo, Pat across the board is lowercase. I need to uh, change the capital P and J on your note. So that will be adjusted before it is cemented on the blockchain forever. And, you know, Money Trees, all about making sure that we're here planting seeds, planting ideas. I don't mind admitting when I'm wrong. Let it be documented that I addressed it beforehand when it went up. Anyway, a little bit of a tangent. Pat, we're going to list this corrected note on Zora as a one of one. What would you like the price to be? Ooh, man, that's, <laughs> that's a good question. Oh, man. Um, I, like, I like meaning of, I like uh, numbers that have meaning. Um, and so I think the, the best kind of gold, if I'm not mistaken, I better get this right. It's 24 carat. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, I'm so, here. Huh? <laughs> I said, I'm here now. I was just, I was adding some ad libs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Twitter yeah, be delayed. yeah. 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 Absolutely. Uh, let's make it 0.24, man. There it is. G 0.24. Yo, man, again, want to thank you immensely for coming on on this Friday. This has been a great conversation. I cannot wait for more people to hear about your NFT. Hopefully it's not sold out by the time they're listening and they can go in and cop it. And actually, hopefully it, hopefully it is sold out. Go buy it on secondary. Go make somebody come up off this. Uh, yeah, that's all I got, G. Again, thank you. You're dope. I'm looking forward to more of your content all through the rest of this year and seeing what you continue to build as an artist, as a community leader, as an entrepreneur. That's all I got for you, G. I hope you enjoy your weekend. Yes, sir. Yeah. Peace out, man. Peace, man. Peace, peace, peace.